Hello, thank you for joining me tonight for Tune In Tuesday. My name is Sharon Rogers and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine. And tonight I'm going to share with you a beautiful suite that is very unsharon like um, from the annual catalog. I think this is a perfect suite for the fall, makes great masculine cards, and uh, I just I just think the color combinations in the designer series paper are beautiful. Let's get started. This first project is really simple stamping. You don't need a die cutting machine. You really just need some stamps, ink, and paper. Uh, you'll also need a little post-it. Um, you can use masking paper, but I prefer to use, reserve my masking paper for things that I have to cut out in shapes. All I need for this one is a line. Um, so a post-it note will do for me. For our first card, we're going to bring in a piece of Moody Mauve. This is a 2023-2025 in color. In colors are trendy colors in the industry, uh, industry nationwide. So you'll see this color probably in the stores, especially this time of year, I would think. And we have um, a piece here that measures eight and a half by five and a half. It is scored at four and a quarter. So I'm just gonna fold on that and burnish it to get a nice crisp fold. The next piece of cardstock I have, and all these measurements will be contained in your class kit, although I will be cutting those pieces for you. But this is three and a quarter by four and a half. And I am going to, before I do any real stamping on it, I'm going to dirty this up a little bit. It's very flat white right now. So I'm going to bring in a water painter, and our water painters come in a set of three. It's a very wide tip end for one. That's used for getting a lot of water on a little surface. There's a very fine tip one, and then there's a medium one, and I'm gonna go with the medium one. I'm gonna bring in Wild Wheat, which is another one of our in colors for 2023, 2025. I squeezed the lid. Now I've already done some of this, so um, I would just squeeze my water painter and put some water in, in that cover. I'm gonna swish it around to pick up some of that ink. Now here's where it's really important. You want to make sure none of your other cardstock pieces are around when you do this next step because it is going to splatter and the only splatter we want is on here. So I'm just gonna tap it against against my um, cap here. And you can see I'm putting a little bit of ink on there. I don't need a lot, but this is not the only color I'm going to put on there. I'm also going to bring in the Pebbled Path. And Pebbled Path is another in color. So there are five in colors introduced each year. So the Moody Mauve, Wild Wheat, and Pebbled Path were this year. Also, copper clay, which is a really great color for fall, and boho blue. I'm not gonna bring those other ones in, but I am bringing this one in. Now, this one doesn't have much ink in there, so I'm just gonna squeeze that cover, put a little bit more ink in there, and drop some water in here. Just squeeze it that says where it says push. I'm gonna get some of that ink on your pen. And we're going to just splatter again, just a little bit. All right. Now I wanna let that dry for just a second because it is water and if I wanna stamp on top of water, my inks are going to run. You can hit this with a heat tool if you want, but this is really a simple stamping card so you shouldn't need any fancy stuff. If you don't have a water painter, you can use just a regular paintbrush. What's nice about the water painters is you can put the water right here in the barrel and have it for a no mess effect. All right, while that is drying, I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna bring in my small piece of Moody Mauve, and this is three quarters of an inch by three and a half ish. 
And this piece of basic white is one half inch wide and about three inches long. I'm gonna bring in my thank you stamp. I'm gonna see if I can get this straight. I usually stick my head right over it, but the camera is in the way. We're just gonna hope that that's pretty straight. Oh, and it is. Did I sound as surprised as I am? All right. And so now I'm just gonna give this a fun little treatment. I'm going to angle cut here. And I'm gonna do the same angle on the other side. So I'm just eyeballing it. It may not be perfect and that's okay. So I want this angle to be about the same as that angle. I don't think I did get it that way, but there we go. That's a little bit better, I think. And now I can go ahead and I can adhere this on here and I, th I find it a little bit easier to angle cut the Moody Mauve piece with this one already in place. And I think this is my glue that is um, pretty much empty. So I, I don't know why I keep putting it back in that holder. Let's go ahead and get a, a oops, a fresher one. There we go. And we'll stick this down. For some reason, I have a hard time mounting words upside down, even though the shape is the same. So this is much longer than it needs to be. Right now I'm centering it um, horizontally, or vertically, I guess. And then I can see what the border looks like. So I'm just gonna come that far away and snip both sides. And so now I have a nice little layered piece. Pretty easy to come up with. All right, our other piece should be dry now because we just used very fine drops of water. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the, let me show you, I'm gonna bring in this barrel stamp. I'll be using that one and this uh, feathery fern piece, and I've already used the thank you. Just sticking to those three stamps here. I'm gonna get out my pebble, pebbled path again and ink that up. And we'll just stamp that right on there, somewhere near the bottom. And then I wanna stamp the ferns. Now the ferns have, I'm gonna clean this stamp so I can change blocks. The ferns have a fairly long stem, and I don't want that stem to show. I want it to appear as though it's in that barrel. So we need to do something called masking. You can use masking paper if you want. That's special paper um, meant for stampers. I'm not gonna use it here because I only need a straight line and a post-it will serve that um, purpose here because this edge I want to protect all of this and this edge is straight. I don't want to line it right up with the edge. I want to come a little bit down because this post-it has a little bit of a thickness. So if I put it exactly where that edge is, when I go to stamp this, there is going to be a little bit of a gap just because of the thickness of that paper, even though it's very thin. So I'm going to stamp like this. And so this mask is protecting that paper. Then we're gonna stamp a little bit lower one over here. And so then you can see we have some overlapping, which would probably be the way you see it in real life. And then when I take that off, it looks like they are in the barrel. So there we go. Now, I have a piece of basic white cut just an eighth of an inch larger than this piece. So this piece was three and a quarter by four and a half. So this is three and three eighths by four and five eighths. I'm going to mount that on just with glue. I could use some dimensionals, but I don't like to use too many dimensionals um, on too many layers because it gets too thick and the post office doesn't really like it when it's too thick. They'll charge you extra money because it's considered non-machinable if it's too thick. It doesn't go through the automated machines. 
So you see how this just puts a little bit of a, a nicer finished look having this edge. And so we can put this right on our card base now. And we'll put this right here. I'm just centering it. Making sure that border is about the same everywhere. We have to add our sentiment. And this is where I'm going to bring in my dimensionals. Um, those are my mini dimensionals. I don't really want my mini dimensionals. Here's a, a bigger, um, the bigger dimensionals, except for it's just the edges. But that's okay, I'm just gonna use the edges. There's no sense in wasting these. It's all still the same sticky stuff. It just doesn't look like the hexagons that most of the other dimensionals look like. So we're gonna put this right across our barrel, I think, just like that. And now I think the only thing it needs is some gems. These are our in color dots. It comes in um, all of the in colors. I actually have um, kind of a package and a half here. So um, some of these have been used. So this is the boho blue, the copper clay, moody mauve, wild wheat, and pebbled path. Let's go ahead and add some of these to my project. Let's take one of these medium dots here, and I'm just using a take your pick tool. Hmm, that's kind of big right there. I don't think I'm gonna use a medium one there. I think maybe I'll put that over here, and I'll use a small one over here. There we go, it's a little bit smaller. And when you're putting these dots on, you wanna have something triangular in nature. So the next one should probably go either here or here. And uh, I'm gonna take one of the small ones again, and let's see, come on, it doesn't wanna come up. Right there or right here? I think I'm gonna go right up there. So the front of our card is finished. And now we just need to do the outside, I mean the inside. And I've cut a piece that is slightly larger than this bottom piece. So this is three and a half by four and three quarters. And I want to add a little bit of something to that just because, you know, the inside should have something too. Now this is a thank you note and I'm preparing for Thanksgiving. So um, in November, I like to send a card every single day thanking someone for something. It just helps me to remember to be grateful and to count all the blessings in my life. And so I need to start stocking up now on my thank you cards. I'm just gonna go ahead and plop that right over there. You can put it in any corner or you can decorate it however you want. I just think a little something is nice. I'm not gonna do an inside sentiment here just because it'll give me extra room to write if I don't. And I'm not exactly sure who's gonna receive this card. So I'm not 100% sure if there's a specific message that I would want to stamp in here. So there we go. And what I mean by that is this, this stamp set has some other messages. You are proof there is good in the world, which is a very nice saying. It takes up a lot of space inside. So if you don't wanna write a lot, that's good. Um, your thoughtfulness is much appreciated. Again, I don't know if somebody was being thoughtful or if they were doing something else. You always know just what to say and do. See how these don't, I don't know if they're going to fit the situation and the person I'm giving it to. So I'm just going to leave my inside blank. But there is our first card. For this next card, we're going to use a similar combination. In the directions for um, the project, I believe I've used crumb cake, um, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and show you that we can go ahead and stick with the wild wheat and it'll look just as nice. Uh, we're gonna begin with a base of pebbled path. And again, this is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And so I'm just gonna fold that and burnish it. 
And then I have a piece of basic white cardstock, and this measures four by five and a quarter. I actually have two of those pieces because one is going on the inside. The first thing I'm gonna do is stamp. Now, I need to protect my surface a little bit because I'm going to be stamping off the bottom. I'm going to bring in this tall vase image. Now on the tall vase, we have, it's a little difficult to see probably on camera, but this is the bottom. It's a little bit more rounded and there's, there's two little tiny bump outs on the bottom. That's the bottom of the vase and the top is just a straight line. So that's how you can tell which is which, which end is up, if you will. I'm gonna bring in my Pebbled Path ink, and I'm going to create the illusion of three differently sized vases just by how I stamp. So I'm gonna stamp one over here, and I'm stamping off my cardstock so I have that height. Now I wanna make a slightly taller one right next to it. I'm gonna give it a little bit of space. And there I have that one. And then I'm going to make um, a slightly smaller one to the left of that. And so there I have three vases all done. I'm going to set this stamp aside before I get into trouble with it. I'm going to bring in my Moody Mauve. And again, I'm going to bring in those feathery type of pieces. I am going to mask again. Remember to leave a little bit showing just to compensate for um, what is in there, uh, the thickness of the paper. I'm just going to stamp right there. And without stamping or re-inking again, I'm gonna come over here and mask that off and stamp again. And so it gives a little bit of a different shade. So it gives the illusion that you've used two different inks, but it's really just the same ink without any extra work. Let's go ahead and bring in that wild wheat now, before I do any stamping, I'm gonna need to free up my block, so I might as well clean these stamps that I've used. Both of them. Stamp and Scrub is one of our two types of cleaners, the other one being the chamois. I like them both for different reasons. Um, so what did I need to do? Oh, I need to free up this block, that's right. And I'm going to get the branch, there are two different branches in this set. I'm gonna get this one right here and mount that. And again, I don't need to worry that this is extending off the edge because that's going in the vase. I don't care if it doesn't stamp well because it's not going to show. I'm gonna mask off that center, dip this in my wild wheat and stamp right up there and so there we there we have that that was pretty easy although this is simple stamping we are going to um, add a little bit extra to this card and we're going to do that by embossing embossing is putting a texture on card and i'm using the exposed brick 3d embossing folder which gives a nice deep impression. Um, it's kind of like a brick wall that's been um, worn down by the elements. And this happens to be on a low inventory at the moment. I don't know how long it will last before it comes back in, but um, it will be around for a while, even if it goes out of stock for a little bit. I'm gonna put this in here and bring in my embossing machine. Stamp and Cut and Emboss Machine. This is if you love stamping and you're just getting into this, this is one thing to put on your wish list, maybe even your Christmas wish list. 
because it is a higher priced item, but it does so much. It does embossing, and in a second I'll show you that it does die cutting. We're gonna take this folded edge, and I've put down, um, oh sorry, that was the wrong, that's the wrong sandwich. You're gonna put down plate number one, you're gonna put down your folder with the cardstock in it, folded side heading through the machine, and then you're going to put in uh, over the top number four plate. I'm just gonna run that right through. And I think you can see that it puts a nice little texture on that cardstock. It's pretty cool. Now, the reason why you want it to stamp first is because a lot of these fine lines are not going to show up because of the texture if you stamp afterward. Sometimes you can get away with things, but not when the lines are this fine. I'm going to keep this right here for a moment because I'm going to show you how to die cut. I'm going to put in um, my plate number one. Here's a number two plate. This is a number three plate and they're numbered so that you can see them. And I'm going to get out a piece of cardstock that I have stamped. Now, actually I haven't even stamped it yet. So what I should do is get out a piece of scrap cardstock and I'm just reaching into my scrap bin here and I'm going to take out this piece right here. Let me just move this. I guess I do have to move it aside just a little bit. I'm going to bring in my thank you again and the, my Moody Moth. And we're going to just stamp a thank you there. I'm then going to bring in a set of dies that I love, and it's called Stylish Shapes. It allows you to cut different shapes and it adds some stitching, some faux stitching around the edges. Stylist Shapes dies, that is hard to say by the way, um, comes with a bunch of nesting circles and squares as well as these banners. I'm gonna take this thinnest of the longer ones and that's what we are going to die cut. Now I find it helpful to hold that in place when I'm die cutting. So you can you can just use that post-it that you were um, masking with. Just put that right over the top to kind of hold that in place. You're gonna bring in your machine. Again, you've got the number one, number two, and number three plate. You're gonna put another number three plate on with your cardstock and and die, and then you're gonna put another one on top of that. So one, two, three, cardstock die, three. And I'm gonna carefully peel that piece off. And here we go, you can see that we've got a nice little fun edge. And what's great about the Stylish Shapes dies is they also leave a fun edge around here. So if I'd been very careful and picked um, a layer where I wanted that window, and um, then I could have used this as well, but I didn't center it, so too bad we're not gonna use that one. So let's go ahead and bring back in my elements. I'm going to adhere this to my card base Again, I prefer this liquid glue. It gives me a little bit of wiggle time to place things exactly right. I also, if it's handy, use the stamp and, stamp and Seal Tape Runner. But the glue is really my go-to. I like that the best of all. All right. So I can put this right here, but I thought, oh, it's missing a little something. So I brought in my In Color Jute, 2023-2005 In Color Jute trim. Um, the Pebbled Path is gone because I used it for a, a big swap when I got together with a bunch of demonstrators. Um, but you can see the Moody Mauve is here and Wild Wheat, Boho Blue, and Copper Clay. And I just needed a little, little piece here. So this is just a little bit longer than that. 
And what I found is I can separate these strands and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. It does help it lay a little bit flatter if you do it all the way. I'm not gonna separate it all the way. Just doing the ends because um, if I did it all the way, it would be a little bit more of a bear to adhere down, I think. So I'm just gonna fray that end and I'm gonna fray the other end. It's very simple to do. I think there are three strands here and you can find them to pull them apart pretty easily. All right, so I've got that done. I'm gonna hide this in the back here. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can take some adhesive um, and just lay down a strip and stick this to it. Uh, but I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals. So I thought what we might do is hold this down with dimensionals. I'm gonna see if I can make sure that the ends are, are kind of the same length. Oh, this is a little bit shorter than I intended, I think. And I'm just gonna hold that right over there. Now, because I don't want this to rock, I'm really gonna do one in the middle and cheat that edge up to the top. Because this these dimensionals are doing double duty. And so now we have this right here. Uh, let's center it a little bit more right here. So there we go. And if you want your ends to be a little bit more um, consistent, you can fray that one out. And so there's the front of our card. We just now need to do something on the inside of the card. And again, it matters um, maybe who you're sending that to, what you wanna do. Um, let's go ahead and just stamp another, um, and I've already put them away, but let's get them back out. Let's just stamp another vase with something in it, with the color in it, I think. So we'll get those blocks back out and freed up. Get my inks back out. So I wanna protect my surface down here, I'm gonna stamp in the bottom left this time. I wanna know where the, my where my top is. And we're gonna just stamp right like that. I'm gonna take the palm frond. It's not a palm frond. I don't know what this is. Is it decorative grass? It doesn't feel like decorative grass to me either because I feel like decorative grass is, maybe it comes in many types, but a lot of times what I see decorative grass, it's just really, really tall grass. So I don't really know what this is called. Feel free to put it in the comments if you know what it's called. And please don't give me the Latin name because, listen, I can't remember the English name. So there we go, there's the inside of the card that we just need to adhere this down. And you can go ahead and decorate the envelope just as well, whether you do it just as we did on the inside here, or if you just wanna go the quick route. Here we go. And uh, the quick route of, of really just um, putting a little something on the envelope. So here I have an envelope. Again, let's protect my surface. Uh, we'll get my Moody Mob back out. And there we go. We just got a little decoration on that envelope. Coordinating envelope and card. One of the things I forgot to do was to add some of these uh, rhinestones and I remembered afterwards and, and then I figured I should probably come back on to camera to tell you what I did. But I used these neutral adhesive backed sequins. Um, they're perfect for fall. And these uh, smoky slate-ish colored ones, I just added um, three here to my card because they went pretty well with the pebbled path and and kept it looking fairly neutral enough. Um, so I think it just adds a little bit of something extra to this card. 
Before we get started with our next project, I wanted to just let those of you who may be new to my process of Tune In Tuesday classes, how you can get the class kit that will allow you to create two of tonight's, two of each of tonight's projects. All you need to do is place an order of $35 or more before shipping and tax in my online store using the link that is in the um, description of this video. It contains a host code and so it lets me know that this is the kit that you want. Also, if your order is $50 or more, I am going to send along a package of the neutrals adhesive backed sequins that I'm using on a couple of the cards tonight. So that's just as an added thank you. Of course, you will also get the PDF tutorial. Let's get back to our projects. The Earthen Textures bundle has some designer series paper that is designed to work with this bundle. It's called Earthen Elegance and you can see it's got some pretty um, foliage kind of patterns. This really, I mean, you look at it and and when you know it's foliage, you can tell it's foliage, but it would work. This is a great uh, kind of coffee looking card, um, but it's got some blue on the back. I think that's Misty Moonlight. Here's a Moody Mauve pattern with some Pebbled Path pattern on the back. We've got um, this, which reminds me of a baseball, but I think it's um, some kind of cloth um, or meant to be clay. Um, I believe a lot of these were um, photos of some clay um, pieces that were made. Um, here's a piece that's just got some texture to it, but it is um, in the pretty peacock color. This, I love this um, kind of striped variegated paper. It's got copper clay and pecan pie, um, vanilla and white undertones to it um, with a, a blue pattern on the back. And then there's this one that's got some branches in it as well as the uh, pecan pie and the copper clay coloring and a variegated piece as well here on the back. We've got this, which I call, kind of call bean pot. I don't know if that's what it is, but it just reminds me of bean pots for some reason. And uh, so you can make a really uh, cute little card that um, I believe I made this past Friday um, out of this. And so you can refer back to my Friday Night Live video right here on YouTube. Um, you can also find the link on my Facebook page. On the back, there's this interesting color, kind of paint drip color pattern. Um, and that's it. So it's some really beautiful, elegant paper. Goes perfectly with the fall season, in my opinion. So I'm gonna take a piece of that Pretty Peacock Designer Series paper. I'm gonna take a piece of thick basic white that is eight and a half by five and a half. It is scored at four and a quarter, and I'm just gonna fold that. And I use thick basic white because it gives a little bit more of a substantial card when it's the base. My regular basic white is a little bit thinner, and so is not quite as um, sturdy and does not make um, quite as nice of a finished card, in my opinion. So let's add some glue here. Right now, it, there's a little bit of a plug in it and so I knew that that was going to happen so I got to spread this out a little bit here now that I've got the glue flowing again we're going to put this on the left edge of the card I'm going to try to get it so that the borders on the left top and bottom are all the same so there we have that one down now, in the interest of time, I showed you how to die cut on the last card, but I mean, I'll show you, I'll tell you what I did. I took the Earthen Textures dies. So these dies uh, come as part of the bundle. You can buy just the dies, or you can buy just the stamps, or you can buy them together and save 10% in this catalog. And it's got several dies. This will put some texture on some cardstock. 
this cuts out one of the branches. Um, actually, these all cut out these images right here. We've got one for this vase and one for the barrel. Um, and then we've got uh, a handle to add to one of the vases. We've got some grass, some decorative grass, and some ornamental stuff that you could put across that barrel or, or across the card. So, and some fans and ferns and all that stuff. So lots of different pieces in these dies. I've gone ahead and saved some time, but I've cut out two of these kind of ferns, one in crumb cake and one in basic white. I've cut out two types of grass. I cut out a copper clay, and I think I have another one somewhere um, that is um, pretty peacock. Let me see if I can find that, because I guess I forgot to get it out. All right, I got this pretty peacock one. So you can't do this in one pass of the machine because there's only one fern and I'm using two. So you have to go through a little bit, uh, you know, at least two passes, but you can consolidate your die cutting by getting everything ready ahead of time and just putting them out all on the plate. And then it's hard to see on my bottom, but I've already cut out one of these barrels. Now I'm gonna take some of this decorative trim that is meant to go with this suite. And this is called wavy trim. And it's just a really pretty craft kind of color. I'm going to wrap this around. Now I think I need a little bit of a glue dot to, to kind of hold it in place. Um, it isn't totally necessary. Um, the mock-up that I used did not have this glue dot holding things in place. Um, but I think it'll make it easier. It'll make it easier if I can actually get it on there. So I'm going to just put that over there just like that. That'll hold that. And I'm going to wrap this around. So this is just a decoration for my vase. And I'm going to then pop it up on the card with dimensionals. So I'm going to bring in some dimensionals here. And one's going to go down here. And this one is going to adhere these pieces down just like that. It's going to hold them down. Now, before I, I do anything else, I'm going to figure out where I'm going to place this on my card and arrange all my components. So I want some lower and some higher. In fact, I, I don't even know if I want two full ferns. I don't think I do. But we're just going to put in some of these colors. I love the peacock and the copper together. So I could do that. I'm going to I'm going to cut down this fern cuz nobody says we have to use it the way it was. I'm just going to cut this down a little bit. I don't need that much showing. Now I've made a mess on my surface. All right. Now I think I've got my pieces together. I'm going to go ahead and try to put it together. So I'm just going to take the backing off of here. I will want to glue down my other pieces. Now, we do have some adhesive sheets, but I found that it's not really a huge deal as long as you're, you've got a light touch. I'm just gonna put a little glue in some of these places. That's a lot of glue. I'm just gonna spread it out. And I don't need that whole end. Most of it's going to be hidden. I'm going to take my little, my little piece here and I'm going to figure out where that's going to go. So maybe that's, that's going to go right there, I think. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing for our other grasses. These have a little bit of a wider spot on them. Well, let's go ahead and just put that one right there. Let's angle this one off to the side so everything's not going straight up. This guy's shaking loose from his foundation a little bit. And then maybe we'll put this white one right over the top of it all. Just in the front, peeking through. 
So we have something that looks like this, I guess. All right. And we're just going to lay this right on over the top. Let's get that piece out of there. So there we go. And now we just need a sentiment to finish this off and probably some sort of embellishment. So I'm going to bring in this with gratitude. This really is um, turning out to be one of my favorite sets. And it, when I first saw it in the catalog, I'm not kidding, it sort of spoke to me. All the stamps don't do that. It was one of those, I'm like, this is not really my style because you can mix and match things and make all sorts of different looking vases and pots. Um, it, and I don't know, it's just not really my style, but something said, you are gonna regret it if you do not get this bundle. And I can see why now after I've been playing it with it for a while. Um, this is really one of my, my favorites, I think. I'm gonna bring in these again. And so we have a couple of different choices here that would look, even the gold would look great, I think. But uh, my putty's getting a little old, so what I'm gonna do is tear off that end and just turn it a little bit and you'll begin to see some stuff oozing out and that's really sticky stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lighten this up a little bit. I think I need another little dimension too. That seems to be a little bit wobbly, probably because of all the um, pieces that I put with it. So we're gonna put that there. Maybe I'll put another little, um, little edge piece over on the other side just to keep it balanced. Sometimes you just gotta go with the flow here. When you're creating, you see a you see a need and you address it. So I'm seeing a need for a little bit more dimension, dimensionals to hold things down. And there we go. Now it's now it's sturdy. Let's go put ahead and put see how much has come out now. I'm just gonna flatten that down a little bit. And we're gonna put um, some of these gems all around. Let's Let's put one up here and we'll put another one, let's say up here and let's put a larger one down on the left here. And there is a very simple card. I mean, it did take some die cutting, but not a lot. And just those dies, just it, the card practically built itself and there's lots of room to write in here. Um, we could, of course, stamp something in here. Um, I think I'm gonna do something different. I think I'm gonna put some words in here. I think with gratitude, I think I'm gonna go, you always know just what to say and do. Do you have somebody like that in your life? They just always know the right thing to say and or do. Everybody needs somebody like that in their lives, in their life. There we go. And now maybe what I'll do is I will stamp some little decoration. Because, you know, why not? I'm just going to come out. And it's it, my usual default is kind of coming down here to the bottom uh, and stamping something just to give it some interest. Now what I might do is just do this. So it doesn't have to be a single stamp and I'm stamping off to give some depth of color and dimension that way. Pretty easy card. And of course we can't forget our envelope. Instead of stamping on the front, I'm going to stamp on the back just the way I did on the inside of the card, I'm going to stamp some hanging branches. It's like they're being hung to dry. You can stamp all sorts of different um, areas on, on the envelope and angles. And there we have a decorated envelope. 
You can, of course, add something to the front as well, but I'm just gonna keep the surprise in the back. For this last card, you're going to need a piece of copper clay. Again, I've used just a standard card base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. We can go ahead and fold and burnish that. I've gone ahead and I've die cut a few of the elements already. One is this tall vase out of the Pretty Peacock Designer Series paper. I've cut this little piece out of crumb cake cardstock, and I've cut this large fan out of copper clay as well. We're not gonna need the bottom of this stem. We might as well just get rid of it. Now you can add a little texture here by folding. There are some score lines in here, and you don't have to, but this just does add a little bit more dimension. And you can fold it to you or away from you. There are score lines going both ways. You can al just alternate them. But it just gives a little bit. Now, this is going to flatten out in the mail, so you don't have to take too much time to make it have too much dimension but you can see that it just adds just a little bit of shadow in there um, and adds a little bit of interest. The more you crease, the more you will see that shadow and you will see the dimension. All right, so I have that. Now for this vase, if I put this at the top, you can see it doesn't fit, it's too big. I'm just gonna slide this down here and look, it fits about right there. So that's where I'd want to adhere it. And the best thing to do is to go ahead and put your glue right on the crumb cake piece. And I know I prefer to cut it off and I can see that I need to cut off a half to three quarters of an inch off the top here. I do need some in order to adhere it, but I don't. I wanna make sure it's not peeking over the top at all. So it looks like I have that about right. So you can see that there's just a little bit of edge there. And I'm gonna let that set up and dry. Now I'm gonna show you um, a fun way to use your DSP. I've taken this piece um, that's got the branches in it. It's kind of got a copper clay look to it. And this piece is three and three quarters by five inches. I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I'm gonna cut on an angle. And I'm gonna cut so that I'm cutting about an inch and a half, maybe two inches, somewhere in that range. On this side, up a little bit higher, maybe in the I don't know, two and three quarters inch range up here, so from the bottom. So this, about this far from the bottom and about this far from the bottom. And I'm doing that by putting the edges where I wanna cut in my in the ditch of my paper trimmer. So you can see I, I want it about, about that far. And you can see this edge is much smaller than that one. So I'm just gonna give that a cut not measuring at all. I'm just saying that looks about right. This looks about right. I'm going to bring in a piece, actually two pieces of basic white. They are four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to adhere. This one is my front side. It's going to go in the upper half here. This one's the inside of my card. It's going to go in the lower half. And so I'm going to just glue those down right where they are setting right now. Kind of get a little closer to the edge there with my glue. I just want to make sure I've got my little border going. Now you may want to stamp first before you would hear this just in case you know you might drop your stamp or just not to get a good clean image. 
Um, probably is always better to stamp before you adhere. Stamp before you stick, as the CEO of Stampin' Up! Sarah Douglas says especially when it comes to kits. She loves the kits. So she sorts and then she stamps before she sticks. All right, so I have these pieces. I'm gonna be putting this on here and then I'm gonna be putting my fan in here. I like to make the fan a little bit, well, maybe. I don't know if I wanna put it off crooked. That's not bad right there. Or I could put it off to this side a little bit or I could stand it up straight. Hmm. I think I'll have it a little bit crooked. Not too bad though. I'm just gonna put some glue right there in that spot. That will be enough to hold it. The glue is pretty, pretty sticky. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. And then I'm gonna put my pot on and I'm gonna put that on with some dimensionals. So all of these elements that were die cut were able to go through in a single pass. I know your time watching this is precious, so I wanted to save a little bit of time. Most of you know how to die cut, and if you didn't, you learned it earlier when I was going over that for other cards tonight. All right, so there we have that. I'm gonna go ahead and get out, let's see. Uh, I think I still like that with gratitude. I'm gonna bring in my block here. I'm gonna use Pretty Peacock again. Love this color. This was a former in color that they brought back due to popularity and I'm so glad I was so sad when it was an in color and it's two years was up um, and I forgot the possibility of it coming back and so when it came back I was thrilled just came back this year as a core color which means it's not going anywhere for a long time let's go ahead and adhere this down Now, because I'm writing notes of thanks or gratefulness, um, I am going to not put any stamping on the inside. It is decorated already in the inside with this, and it's taking up quite a bit of room. So I don't need to do any more decoration there. We'll just adhere this to the inside. just a fun way to decorate the inside. Um, and this idea I got from another Sharon. There, you know, there are a lot of Sharons in Stampin' Up! that are demonstrators. Um, it's amazing. Um, this one is from Sharon Armstrong, who is actually one of the latest $1 million salespeople from Stampin' Up! Oh, I got a little sticky spot right there. I need to take a little eraser and get rid of that. I can do that later. Um, and so she will be getting to design her own stamp set, working with the Stampin' Up! designers to, to design her own stamp set. That's a pretty cool thing. I'm not going to get there. Not in, you know, not in the next few years anyways. Uh, I'm nowhere near there. I'm not even at the halfway point. Not even close to the halfway point. So now I need to find my gems that I just had. Oh, here they are, right in front of my face. And again, we're gonna um, pick ones, and I can I can pick the darker ones, or I can pick the lighter ones. Um, I think I want the darker ones so that if I if I put some up here, they show a little bit better. So let's uh, let's um, let's put one right there because that's where it fell. I mean, you can pick them up with your hand too. Let's put one right there. And now we need a little bit of balance. So let's go ahead and put one right, um, right down here. We got a little triangle and that's a very simple card. We could put another one there, but again, you wanna have odd numbers. So I don't wanna put a fourth cause then I'd have to put a fifth. Um, so 
that is our card. And to decorate the outside, I can pick any of these stamps I want, or I can use the designer series paper. Let me show you what I mean. So I have this piece that matches uh, the one that I put on the front, but if I were to put it on my envelope, um, what I'm planning on doing is putting it on the back flap of my envelope. And you can see this scrap is not wide enough. And if I turn it this way, it's then on a side. So I don't want that, but I could decorate the flap with just these stripes going across. Another thing I could do is I could cut a thin strip and I think I'm gonna do that because I really like this paper and um, I think just a little bit will do it. I'm gonna cut a half an inch off here, which is great because it leaves this width to be four inches, which is a nice um, size to work with with cards. And I'm gonna just take this little piece right here and we're going to adhere it right down this front edge. Now you wanna make sure that you do adhere it pretty well um, because you don't want it gumming up the postal machines. And we wanna keep our friends at the post office happy and moving along so they can deliver our mail. It's been a tough season for them as with everybody else, um, they're short staffed. I don't know about you, but sometimes I don't get my mail every day. Wells has been pretty good, um, at least where I live. I know some parts of Wells were hit harder than others due to carrier shortages. But my carrier's been around my area for a long time, and so I get my mail just about every day, but I know not everybody does. So I'm grateful for that. Maybe I will give my mail carrier this card. That sounds like a plan, doesn't it? All right, so that is what I have for you. I have four cards. Oh, and where is my other one? Here it is. And in case you missed the one on Friday, here was Friday's card as well. So you can see we've just, um, you can create quite a few looks um, and they're all great and they go for females, males, and they're perfect for the fall season. I hope you've enjoyed this class. Thank you so much for watching. As a reminder, if you would like the class kit that will have the cardstock and die cuts and, and designer series paper that you need to recreate two of each of tonight's cards, then simply place an order of $35 or more in my online store. You'll find the link in, my, in the description of this video. If your order is $50 or more, I will include those neutrals adhesive backed sequins uh, along with the class kit. And of course, I will mail you a PDF tutorial that will also contain the link to this video so that you can easily find it. Now your order must be placed by Sunday, September 17th in order to qualify. Uh, and that's by 7 p.m. so that I can place um, any orders uh, before I go to bed on Sunday. And then I will cut furiously on and die cut on Monday and hope to mail them out on Tuesday. Have a great rest of your week.